Welcome everybody to this CUBE conversation. My name is Dave Vellante and we're joined today by Richard Goodwin, who's the group director of IT at Ultraleap and Abhishek Kumar, who manages Dell's PowerStore product line, directs that product line along with several other lines for the company. Gentlemen, welcome to the CUBE. Hey Dave. Hi, that's me. So Richard, Ultraleap, very cool company. It tracks hand movements and so forth. Tell us about the company and the technology. I'm really interested in how it's used. Yeah, we have many uh, product lines. Uh, obviously we're very innovative, uh, innovative um, and the organization was spun up from a PhD, uh, a number of PhD students. They were the co-founders for Ultraleap um, and initially with um, mid-air haptics, um, as, you, as many people may have seen, but also hand tracking, uh, mid-air touch, uh, sense and feel. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 quite impressive um, uh, what we have produced and, and the number of sectors and markets that we are in, um, and obviously to to push us to, to where we are, um, we have relied upon lots of the um, Dell technology, both software and hardware. And what's your role at the company? Uh, I'm the group IT director. Uh, I'm responsible for the IT and business platforms. Um, all infrastructure, network, hardware, software, um, and also the transition of, of those platforms to ensure that we're, we're scalable um, and we are able to develop our software and hardware um, as rapidly as possible. Awesome. Yeah, a lot of data behind that too, I bet. Um, okay, Avishek, you direct a number of products at, at Dell across the portfolio, Unity, Extreme IO, the SC series, and of course, Power Vault. It's, it's quite the portfolio that, that you look after. Um, so let's get into the case study, if we can a bit. Uh, Richard, maybe you could paint a picture of, of your environment, uh, some of the key applications that you're supporting, and maybe what your infrastructure looks like. Give us a high level view. Sure, uh, so um, pre-Power uh, Store, we had um, quite a, a, a disparate uh, architecture, so um, uh, a fairly significant split and siding on the side of uh, cloud, uh, not as hybrid as, as, as we would like and not, uh, not as much as on-prem as we would have liked. Um, and hey, that, that has changed quite significantly. Um, so we now uh, have a number of servers and uh, storage and storage arrays that we have on-premise on um, uh, and then we host ourselves. So we are moving quite rapidly, um, you know, as, as a startup and then moving to uh, a scale-up um, we needed that, that that scalability and that versatility, and also the the whole opex versus capex, um, and and also not being driven by lots of um, SaaS products uh, and, and our architecture and infrastructure, where we needed to be in control because of our development cycles and our products uh, product development. So wait, okay, so so too much cloud. <laughs> you want yeah, you want a little bit of a dose of on-prem. Ex explain that a little bit more. The, the cloud wasn't doing it for you in terms of your development cycle, your control. Can you double click on that? Yeah, some of the some of the control, and you know, there's always a balance because there, there's certain elements of uh, our development cycles and our engineering, uh, software engineering, where we need a very high parallelism. Uh, for some of the work that we're doing, which then, you know, the CapEx investment makes things very, very challenging uh, and not commercially the, the right thing to do. However, uh, there are some of our information, some of our IP, um, some of the secure things that we do. We also do not want um, upgrades as an example or any outages or certain types of server and, and, and spec that we need to be quite bespoke and unique and that needs to be within our control. Got it, okay, thank you for that. Uh, Abhishek, we're going to talk about PowerStore today. So set it up, please. Tell us about PowerStore, what it is, you know, why it's important to this conversation. Sure. So PowerStore is a product that we launched uh, May of 2020, uh, roughly a little bit more than a year now. Um, and it's a brand new architecture that Dell Technologies released. Um, and at the end of the day, I'll talk about a few unique aspects of the product, but at the end of the day, the, where we start with, it's a storage platform, right? So uh, where we see similar to what Richard is saying here uh, uh, in terms of being able to consolidate the customer's environment, whether it is block, file, VWALs, physical, virtual environments. Uh, and and it's, as I said, it's a brand new architecture where we leveraged pieces of existing products where it made sense. 
Uh, and it's a, it's, we are using all the latest and greatest technologies, delivering the best performance based data reduction. Uh, and, and where we see a lot of traction is the options that it brings to the table for our customers in terms of flexibility, whether they want to add capacity, compute, uh, whether in fact, uh, we, we have a apps on de deployment model where customers can consolidate their compute uh, as well on the storage, storage platform if needed. So a lot of innovation from a platform perspective itself. And it's not just about the platform itself, but what comes along with it, right? So we refer to it as an ecosystem part of it, where we work with Ansible playbook, CSI plugin, you name it, right? And it's the storage platform by itself doesn't that doesn't stand by itself. In a customer's environment, there are other aspects of the infrastructure that it needs to integrate with as well, right? So if they're using Ansible playbooks, we want to make sure the integration is there. Got it. And last, perhaps, uh, not the least is uh, the intelligence built into the platform, right? So as we are building these capabilities into the product, uh, there is intelligence built into the product as well as outside the product where things like Cloud IQ, things like uh, 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 technologies built into PowerStore itself makes it that much easier for the, pro for the customers to manage the infrastructure and go from there. Thank you for that. Uh, so Richard, what was the workload? So actually you started with the sort of a green field on-prem if I understand it correctly. What was the workload that you were sort of building around? or workloads? Sorry, we had a, um, a number of different applications, some of which we cannot really talk about too much. Um, and then we engaged them regarding um, the storage uh, issue that we had. Um, and we engaged the um, our account lead and account exec uh, and a number of solution architects were working with us to ensure that we had the optimal solution. And Dell was selected over the competitors as a Many reasons, you know, the, the, the new technology, the deduplication, the compression, the data overall data reduction, um, and the guarantee uh, that also came uh, came with that the, the four to one data reduction guarantee, which was significant to us because of the amount of data that we hold, um, and we have, you know, as, as I mentioned, we're pulling further further data of ours back um, into. Uh, our hosted environments, which will um, end up on the power store, especially with the deduplication that we're, we're now getting, we've now actually hit nine to one, which is you know significant. We were expecting four to one, maybe five to one with some of the data types. And what was excellent, Dell were that confident that they did not even review our data types prior, and they were willing to stand by that guarantee of four to one. And we've excelled that, you know, we've got significant different data types on, on that array and we've hit nine to one. And that's gradually grown over the last nine months. You know, we were kind of at six, then we moved to seven and, and now we're hitting nine to one ratios. That's great. So you get a little free storage. Uh, that's interesting what you're saying, Richard, because I just assumed that a company that guarantees four to one is going to say, okay, let us, let us inspect your workload first and, and, and then we'll do the deal. Uh, so Abhishek, what, what's the tech behind that data reduction that you're able to, with such confidence, not have to pre-inspect the workload in this case anyway? Yes, yeah, so, so it goes back to the technologies that goes behind the product, right? So, so we, we stand behind the technology and we want to make it simpler for our customers as well, where again, we don't want to spend weeks looking at all the data, scanning all the data to, uh, before giving the guarantee. So we stand behind the technology where uh, we understand that as the data is coming in, we are always going to deduplicate it. We are always going to compress it. Uh, there is technology within the product where we are offloading some of that to the uh, outside the CPU. So it is not impacting the performance that the applications are going to see. So a data reduction by itself is not good, good enough. Performance by itself is not good enough. Both of them have to be together, right? So, and that's what PowerStore brings to the table. Yeah, thank you. So Richard, I'm interested. I mean, I, I remember the PowerStore announcement. Uh, I, I sort of saw it leading up to it. And one of the big thrusts from Dell the way I phrase it is essentially trying to create a cloud-like experience on-prem. So really focus on simplicity. So my question to you is, let's start with just the deployment. You know, how complicated was it to install? What was that process like? You know, how many clicks? I mean, not that you have to tell me how many clicks, but you know what I'm, t I'm asking is, is, is how difficult was it to get from zero to, you know, up and running? Well, we actually set down a very difficult challenge. Um, we were, 
in quite a difficult situation where we'd pretty much gone off of a cliff in terms of our IOPS performance. Um, so the RFP was quite rapid and then we needed to get, which, whoever, which vendor was successful, we need to get that deployed rather rapidly and on the floor in our um, data center and server rooms, uh, which we did. Um, and it was very, very simplistic. Um, within three weeks of placing the order, we had that all uh, array in, in our server rack and we had begun the migration. It was very simple to set up. Um, and the management of that array has been, we, we've seen, a, a, I'd say 40% reduction in terms of effort to be able to manage our storage because it is very self-contained, um, you know, even from a, a reporting perspective, the deployment, the migration was all very, very, very simplistic. And, you know, we, we've done some works recently where we had to also um, do some work on the array and some other migrations that we were doing. And, and the resilience came, came, to, came to the forefront of where, you know, the, the dual architecture and no single point of failure um, enabled us to do some things that we needed to do quite rapidly. Uh, because of the the dual nodes um, and the resilience within within the unit and within the um, power store itself was considerable. Where we we kept performance up, it also prioritised any disk re rebuilds, keeps the uh, incoming ingest rates uh, high, and prioritises that you know the workloads, which is you know really impressive, especially when we are moving so quickly with our technology. We don't really have much time to you know micromanage uh, the estate. Can you can you just repeat what you said on the percent reduction? I think I heard you, you cut out there a little bit. A percent reduction on on, on management on, on on the labor side. Yeah, we, so our uh, our lead storage engineer has estimated uh, around forty percent less management. Wow. Okay. So that's um, that's good. So actually, I, I love this conversation because uh, you know in, in the early days of automation, people were like ah that's my job provisioning LUNs, I'm really good at it. But um, I think people are realizing that it's actually you know, not something that you want to be really good at. It's something that you want to eliminate. So it, it, now maybe it's a, he, that storage engineer got his or her nights and weekends back, uh, but, but what do they do now? When they get that extra time, what do you, what do you put them on? You know, more strategic initiatives or you know, other, other exactly. things on the to-do list? What's that like? The, the, the Last thing, uh, you know, any of my team, whether it's the, the storage leads or uh, some of the infrastructure team that are also in, in, involved and engaged, because you know the organisation, we have to be quite versatile as a team you know, in our skill sets. We don't want to be doing those BAU uh, mundane tasks. Even the storage engineer does not want to be, you know, allocating LUNs and allocating storage to physical servers, VMs, etc. We want all of that to be automated um, and. That you know, those engineers are now working on you know some of the cutting edge things that we're trying to do with machine learning as a, as, as an example, uh, which is much more interesting. It's what they want to be doing. Um, you know, and that aids the obvious things like you know, re retention, interest, and, and personal development. We we don't want to be you know that base IT infrastructure management is is, is not not where we, you know any of the engineers want to be. In terms of the decision to go with Dell and PowerStore, I, I'm definitely hearing there was a relationship, there was an existing relationship with Dell. I'm sure that played into it. Um, there were many things. So, you know, the relationship wasn't really part uh, of this, even though I mentioned the end user compute, we, you know, in any sector or anything that we're procuring, we want best of breed uh, and, you know, a best of set. And that was done on, you know, cost is definitely a driver, uh, the technology, you know, is, is of interest to us. We're a tech company. New technology to us is also fascinating, not only our own, uh, but also the, the storage guarantee, the simplicity, um, the resilience within, within the uh, unit. Also the, the ability, which was key to us because of what we're trying to do with our hybrid model and bring, bring back uh, and repatriate some of the data as it were um, from the cloud. Uh, we, needed that ability to, uh, with ease, to be able to scale up and scale out. And the uh, power store gave us that. When you say cost, uh, I want to dig into that. Price or, you know, the, 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 the price tag or the, the cost, I mean, when you do the business case. And, and I wonder if we could add a little color to that. Yeah, they're, 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 there's two elements to this. So they're not only the, the cost and the price tag, 
uh, but then also cost of ownership uh, and the comparisons that we were running against the other vendors, but also the comparisons that we were running from a, a CapEx investment against OPEX uh, and what we have in the cloud. And also the performance, you know, the performance that we get from um, the cloud and our cloud storage uh, and the resilience within that. And then also the initial price tag and then comparing the CapEx investment to the OPEX were all elements that were, were key to us making our decision. And, and you know that there, there has to be some credit taken by the Dell account team in that their relationship it, to, towards the final throws of that RFP, you know, were key initially. Not at all. We were just looking for the best possible storage uh, solution for Ultraleap. And, to, and to, to determine that on your end, was that like a feature because it's sometimes fuzzy what the business impact is going to be, like that forty percent you mentioned, or the data reduction at nine to one when there's a promise of four to one. Did you, what did you do? Did you kind of do a feature function analysis and sort of line that up and, and, and say, okay, I'm going to map that to our business, pro our processes, our IT processes and try to predict what the impact would be. Is that how you did it or did you take a different approach? We did. So we did that you know, obviously between vendors as you'd expect in an RFP, but then also mapping to how that would impact the business. And that is, that is not an easy, an easy process to go through. And, and we've seen more Gains, even comparing one vendor to another, some of that because of the, the technology, the terminology is very, very different. And sometimes you have to bring that upper level and also gain a much more detailed understanding, which at times can be challenging. But we did a very like for like comparison um, and, and also lots of research. But you're quite right, the, the, the business analysis to what we needed, um, we had quite a good uh, forecast. Uh, and from some of our historical information and data and also our engineering and business and strategic roadmap we were able to map those two together not the easiest of experiences not one that i want to repeat but yeah. we we got through it yeah a little bit of art and science involved avashek uh, maybe you could talk about power store what, what you know give us the commercial what makes it different from other products in the market uh, things like cloud iq uh maybe you could talk about that a little bit sure so uh, so again from a it's music to my ears when Richard talks about the ease of deployment and, and the management, because there is a lot of focus on that. But even as I said earlier, from a man technology perspective, a lot of goodness built in, in terms of being able to consolidate a customer's environment into a, in, onto the platform. So that's more from a storage point of view, to give, give the best performance, give the best uh, data reduction, storage efficiencies. Uh, the second part, of course, the, the flexibility, the options that PowerStore bring, uh, gives to the customers in terms of sort of disaggregating the storage and the compute aspects of it. So if, if as a customer, I want to start with different points in terms of what our custom requirements are today, but going forward as your requirements change from a compute capacity perspective, you can use the scale up and scale out capabilities. Um, and, and then the intelligence built in, right? So as you scale out your cluster, being able to move storage around, right, as needed, uh, being able to do that non-disruptively. Uh, so in, instead of saying that, Mr. Customer, your uh, your uh, storage is going to, you're at 90% capacity, being able to say that based on your historical trending, uh, we expect you run out of capacity in six months. Some small things like that, right? And of course, uh, if the, uh, the dial home, the support assist capabilities are enabled, Cloud IQ brings a lot of intelligence to the table as well. Uh, in addition to that, as I mentioned earlier, there is AppSon capability that gives another level of flexibility to the customers to integrate your storage infrastructure into a virtual environment if the customer chooses to do that. Uh, and last but not the least, it's not just about the product, right? So it's about the, the programs that we have put around it. Any, any time upgrade is a big differentiator for us where it's an investment protection program for customers where if they want to have the peace of mind in terms of three months, nine months, three years down the line, if we come out with new technologies, being able to be upgrade to that non-disruptively is a big part of it as well. So it's a peace of mind for the customers that yes, I'm getting into the power store architecture today, but going forward, I am I'm protected from that point of view. So anytime upgrade, it's a new business program that we put around leveraging the architectural benefits of power store. Uh, whether your compute requirement, your storage requirement change, you're, you're, you're covered from that point of view. So again, a very quick overview of, uh, of what PowerStore is, why it is different. And again, uh, that's where that comes from. Thank, thank you for that. Richard, are, are, you, are you actively using Cloud IQ? Do you get, the, what kind of value do you get from it? Not currently. Um, uh, however, we 
have, we have had plans to, to do that. The um, uptake and, and how you, basically our, our, our internal work mode is, is not allowed us to, to do that. But one of the other key reasons for selecting PowerSort was the, the non-disruptive element, you know, with other SaaS products, other providers and other issues that we have experienced. That was one, that was a, a key decision for us from a, um, a power store perspective. One of the other, you know, I, 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 to go back to the conversation slightly in terms of performance, you know, we, we, we are getting getting now, you know, there's a 400% speed of improvement of publishing. Uh, we've got an 80% faster code coverage. Um, so our firmware builds are 1,300% quicker than they were previously. And, and the time savings of the storage engineer and, you know, as, as a director of IT, I often ask for certain reports from from the storage array when, when we're working out for um, storage forecast performance forecast and you know when we're coming close to product releases and code drops um that we're trying to manage the the reporting on the power store is is impressive whereas previously my storage engineer would not be the uh, the most happiest of people when i would uh, be trying to pull you know month end quarterly reports etc uh, whereas now it's it's ease and we have live dashboards running and we can easily extract that information. I love that uh, because, you know, so often we talk about the 40% reduction in IT labor, uh, which, okay, that that's cool. But then your CFO is going to say, yeah, but it's not like we're getting rid of people. We, you know, we're still spending that money and okay, they're getting, you're now into soft dollars. But when you talk about 400%, 18%, 1300%, well, you're talking about business impact and that's telephone numbers to a CFO. So I, I love those metrics. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Yeah, but when they obviously, in some of our dashboards, when, when they're visualized, they are very hard hitting, you know, the, the impact, you know, the, you're quite right, the CFO does chase down, you know, the availability and the resource profile. However, we're on a huge upward trajectory. So having the right resilience and infrastructure in place is, is exactly what, what we need. And as I mentioned before, those engineers are all reallocated to much more interesting work and you know the, the areas that will actually drive our business forward. Speaking of resilience, are you doing any replication? Uh, not currently. However, there, uh, we've actually got a meeting regarding this today with some of the, Dell's um, enterprise and some of their storage specialists in a, in a couple of hours time actually, because that is, uh, very high on the agenda for us to be able to replicate and have a high availability um, cluster and another uh, potentially power store node. So I was going to ask you kind of where you want to take this thing. I'm hearing you're, you're looking at cloud IQ, really try to exploit that. So you got some headroom here in terms of the value that you can get out of this platform uh, to, to do replication, faster recovery, et cetera, maybe protect against you know events. Guys, thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate your insights. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for watching this CUBE conversation. This is Dave Vellante and we'll see you next time.